And returning to Israel, Prime Minister Netanyahu met with German President Joachim Gauck this morning while Jerusalem-Berlin relations remain uh, robust. Uh, the visit comes on the hills of the EU's controversial decision to publish guidelines for the labeling of Jewish settlement products. Gauck also met with President Reuven Rivlin, who had this to say about the state of bilateral ties. 50 years later, and the combination of Israel and Germany still makes us feel some unease. 50 years later, today, we know that the combination of Israel and Germany is right and necessary. It is vital to us, and it is vital for you, too. And uh, with me here in the studio, I have the honor to have uh, Anna Rao, daughter of former German President Johannes Rao. Good evening. Thank you very much for joining Hi. me. So, uh, you know, we've been talking a lot about this year, especially this year, about the relationship between Germany and Israel. We are seeing what is happening all around Europe. We are seeing what is happening terror-wise and with the migration crisis and the terror attacks in Europe. What is the importance of the relationship specifically now between Israel and Germany? I don't think that the terror has a big influence on the change of the German-Israeli relationships. They've been growing stronger, and this year was especially significant because it was 50 years of relations. And so, uh, okay, so let's uh, take it to uh, somewhere else. Because, you know, uh, I've been, I, I was in the big event in uh, Germany uh, just a few months ago. And, uh, you know, there is a feeling among young people in Germany that the past is some kind of a, let's say, a burden. Uh, they feel that they always have um, this, uh, let's say, way to, they need to apologize for what their grandfathers did. And, you know, of course, the Holocaust was a big event to Jewish people, to Israel. Um, how, how do you think that the relationship between, let's say, the new relationship or the nowadays relationship between Israel and Germans should be concerning the two people, concerning Germans and Israelis? Should they continue apologizing? Should they continue? Uh, or should they build a new bridge between the two people? I think they have built a new bridge. There was a long time, I think, Germans that came to Israel, they came because they had a sense of guilt. We used to call it collect collective guilt in Germany. We now move to collective responsibility. That's the term you use in German. Um, I think it has changed with the younger generation that though now people come because they want to go to the Berghain in Berlin or they want to come to the beach in Tel Aviv and they meet on a much on a level with much less prejudices they meet as equals and the Holocaust is always a topic it will come up but it's much less than it was and it's not as significant at least for the relationships one-on-one -on -one between young people anymore. Can you explain to me, so how come, uh, especially Germany was the first country that we saw, like, the, after the EU labeled some products in the settlements, so how come Germany was the first country to actually take out Israeli products uh, from their stores or settlement products from their stores and label them? Was it stores? I'm not, I, I wasn't. It was in the KDV and it, it was, was in, in Kaufhof. And I the, thought Kaufhof didn't do it. I didn't quite they understand, They did. I just actually. saw yesterday. I saw uh, it so in the news, yes. Because there were conflicting reports, and I'm actually really not sure what happened there. Some reports said that the KDV just took down label, the products to label them and then to put them back up. Then there were reports that they actually took them down. Uh, I think it was probably people trying to adhere to the EU guidelines and be, Germans like to be very correct. I don't think it was necessarily a decision that was meant to make a standpoint. I think it was just someone following rules, which uh, Germans have done often and often not <laughs> to great so, results. So I will take you uh, somewhere else. Uh, you know, today uh, uh, Paris uh, or France is holding uh, the regional elections. There is a big uh, probability that the far right there will win the elections. We are seeing some, uh, let's say, some of this phenomena happening in Germany with the Begida movement starting to gain some power. What are the chances that we are seeing this phenomena also maybe taking its way to Germany and with all the events that are happening, we'll see the far right in Germany also gaining more power. 
I hope that the chances are, aren't very big, but I think there is a chance that uh, the far right wing parties will get more points and actually manage to pass the 5% mark in Germany and enter the cabinet. Um, it's, uh, yeah, <laughs> I don't know. I think it so might happen. So, well, just uh, one last question. Uh, do you think that, uh, you know, the, the new uh, president is uh, from East uh, Berlin and the, uh, the last one is from West Berlin? So do you think that these two sides actually finally, can we say that they were 100% united? What, in Germany? In Germany. Uh, no. No. <laughs> no. Anna Rao, thank you very much uh, for this. Thank you. Thanks.